Hello and welcome to Binding the Analytics. It's me, Roland, and I'm glad to see you here. Today, I would like to show you a great tip to enhance visual harmony on your report page and to help your users to see more details in less time. Now, what do I mean by that? A couple of weeks ago, I came across a database problem and I was desperate to solve it. I already had two column charts on the canvas and I wanted to spice things up a little. So I added the tree map visual to help visualize splits or ratios within the group. If you ever use that visual type, you know that it's good, but the coloring? Well, let me show you a super quick example. On this side, you see the default colors for a tree map visual in Power BI. This is for the default theme, but even if we switch to themes, it is kind of a random assignment of colors but I wanted to assign a color to each of the elements based on their group and set up their transparency based on their rank by cells within the group. So I managed to create this. But the best part about what I'm going to show you today is that you can implement this or a similar logic to almost any visual elements in your reports. Before I head over to Power BI Desktop to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how I came up with this solution, I need to ask a favor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It helps others to find this content so they can also learn about this cool trick. With that said, it's time to head over to Power BI. Let's start with my data, which is just a single table and nothing fancy is going on here. I wanted to strip out all the unnecessary bits so it will be easier for you to replicate. I have four different brands, brand one to four, and within each brand, multiple products. Some brands have seven products, other might only have three. And lastly, some absolute random sales figures. Really simple model, right? Let's head over to the report canvas. To start with, I have a table with the brands, products, and sum of sales. And below that, I have a slicer for brands. If we look at the tree map visual with the same details, you can see we have a bunch of different colors and it doesn't look too good. Especially if I add a company template for background, something like this. Let's try to adjust the colors under data colors. Hmm, I mean technically I can start adjusting these colors one by one, but I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'm not lazy. Just efficient, right? So what do we have under advanced controls? Ooh, look at that. This is the standard formula driven coloring, which means that I can pick up a field value to drive my color coding for this visual. Fantastic, let's get started. I'm going to write all of the decks in a single measure and share that code with you via my blog post. Just as a reminder, I want to assign colors to these elements on the brand and set up transparency options by product based on their rank within the brand. Let's start with the ranking because that's going to be the easiest bit. And bring it into this table. Let's adjust the sorting a bit, sort by brand and then sum of sales. Look at that, it looks perfect. Just remember, if I remove the brand from this table, my ranking will be different because the brand field no longer provides additional context to my ranking. But that's okay. For this exercise, I don't really care about this problem because my DAX will reference the brand column. So even if I don't add brand as a field to the visual, it's going to work fine. If you want to keep the ranking on products, even when the brand field is removed, you need to create a virtual table for that, but it's not part of today's tutorial. So let's do the next steps. So what does this ranking mean? Allow me to use brand three as an example. Brand three has three products and I want product 15 to be the shiniest of all and product 13, the least shiny. I mean, I want to see product 15 pop as it has the largest sales amount and I want to see that easily. Let's say that we have a range for transparency. 
I'm going to say a range from 20 to 100. 100 means full visibility or maximum popping effect by 20 is almost fully transparent. Let's add that range here, where my hands are. For brand 3, where I have 3 products, I want to assign 100 to the top ranking product and 20 to the last one. To get a nice balanced look, I need to find what's exactly halfway between 100 and 20. That's where I need to draw another line. This means the second best selling product should be assigned to 60. Let's look at another example. For brand 2, where I have 5 products, I still want to assign 100 to the top selling product and 20 to the last one. However, I need to draw 3 imaginary lines to my measuring tape to get that balanced look. So I have one at 80, another one at 60 and the last one at 40. These numbers are going to help me with the balanced look and my visuals are going to look perfect. Let's head back to Power BI and see how we can get this logic implemented in the DEX code. I'm going to need to start with calculating the number of products I have. Let's see if I got that right. Alright, it seems to be working fine. Just a friendly reminder, this DEX code was designed to work for this specific color coding scenario, before someone takes this as a DEX best practice. Next up, I need to set my minimum transparency. While I was preparing for this tutorial, I realized that instead of hard coding this in the next step, I should give you the option to change it. So I'm just going to leave a quick minimum transparency line here. Then we can tackle the most challenging bit, drawing those imaginary lines between 100 and minimum transparency. For that purpose, I use the switch statement. When product rank is 1, make it 1, representing 100%. And then, I'm just going to copy paste the mathematical calculation bit here. So, what do we do here? First, I define the length of my scale. That's the 100 minus minimum transparency. Remember, this is the 20 to 100 scale. Then I divide that with the number of products minus 1. This step is going to give me those intervals to jump from 100 to 20. After that, I multiply that interval with product ranking minus 1. So if I want to know how many intervals I need to jump from 100 to get the second best selling product, this number is going to be 1. I need to travel one interval from 100. Then I subtract this number from 100 and lastly divide it by 100. These are necessary steps to get the right number. Good, you are still here. I know, it was probably the most difficult part of today's video. It is possible that I overcomplicated this step, so if you have a quicker solution, please let me know in the comments below, I pin your idea so others will be able to use it. And lastly, I just need to define my colors in HSLA code, not in hex, with another switch statement. Let me just copy these here. As you can see, the first three bits in the HSLA code will give me the color I'm looking for, and the last bit will pick up the transparency level from the measures above. If you want to learn more about the HSLA coloring, I added the link to the info box below. Let's see this DEX code in action. And if I start slicing and dicing the report by brand, or apply role level security at the brand level, I can get an aesthetically pleasing report page. I no longer have to worry about random coloring or any of that because I'm in control of all the colors here. I could stop here and ask you again to like and subscribe, you know, the usual stuff. But one more thing came to my mind while I was playing with this. Did you know that some formatting options are visible for some visuals, while the same attributes may not be available for other visual types? Shocking, right? However, with some tricks, we can hack Power BI. Let me show you what I mean. While this advanced controls option is available for the tree map visual, it is not available for donut or pie chart.
but if I create my visual first as a tree map, apply advanced coloring options and then change the type to donut or pie, the measure driven coloring sticks, even if there is no such option for these two visual types. Moreover, if I change to a column chart, my coloring setup still stays. I was so happy to find this solution. Don't get me wrong, I know that pie charts, donut charts and tree maps may not be the best ways of visualizing data. However, as I said, I wanted to spice up my report page a bit. And I knew that I won't have more than 6 subcategories or products per brand. And even if I end up changing it back to a column chart, I still have the DEX code so I can utilize its flexibility. But sometimes, I like to have some bold ideas. And with that said, I would like to encourage you to test it out. The DEX code is available under my blog post, so it should be just a copy-paste exercise with some fine-tuning. But the code itself is super flexible, so you can adjust it to your likings. And if you have any questions, comments or just want to say hi, please do that in the comment section below. I try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your reports. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!